hurting father that you would not let that happen to you. you're done with this servant dear god they should be used of you in a mighty way it's already being used of you father we pray that you'll keep your hand upon him and lord for even for vice president pence and his wife and children that you'd watch over them and protect them and keep them safe and help them to be a help vice president pence to be a help lord and encouragement to president trump someone that's there to help hold him up and and to help hold, keep him from falling down and giving in to the things of the world or the things the enemy wants. But he won't do that because he'll have an influence from a godly man that loves you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now have your way and will, Father, in their lives. And all decisions that's made, Father, bless this country with the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit it's ever seen. We pray from east to west, north to south, there'll be a mighty move of your spirit. It involves all 50 states, Lord, every one of them affected by the power and the move of God's Holy Spirit. People coming into the kingdom and being born again. People rededicating their lives. People coming back to you. A mighty move of your spirit, your God. A great move. A powerful move. A, a full gospel move across this nation, Lord. Many being healed. Many being delivered. And many being saved. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Praise God. Tim or Kevin, you feel like you will say anything, you're welcome to. Praise God. Well, folks, uh, we need to keep uh, President Trump uh, lifted up in prayer. And so I'm going to do my best to do this message today. I left my reading glasses in the car. And so I'm going to, you just, you're okay, Josh, you don't have to worry about it. Was that another lady looking? <laughs> he, he said uh, he was uh, taking a picture of me the other day and there was a Lady bug all over, just wonder we're not even seeing. <laughs> and I shouldn't say what I said. I'm like, I shouldn't say this, but I said, well, I, I draw the ladies. <laughs> and then I say the sneaking ladies. <laughs> and I don't mean nothing bad with that, folks. I just told him it was a joke. But this, the lady bugs do sneak. And that little church where we've got, we'll go in there and there may be a hundred out in the church. So. When they're at just certain parts of the year, they come out, it seems like. And and, when, and, and, and we're going into the end work. And so you, we're fighting them all through the service. But uh, I think my son's going to the car. <laughs> Praise God. My son Josh was with me today. He said he wanted to, oh, here you go, he wanted to start uh, coming with me on the first Sunday of every month. He said, I want to start uh, recording your messages and so I can have them, Dad. And I sort of felt like he was saying, you know, if anything, he didn't mean it this way, but if anything ever happened, I asked him, said, are you thinking maybe God's getting ready to take me home soon? He, he said, I don't think that, Dad, but I just want to remember, he said, I want to have the messages, you know. So uh, he's a blessed son, loves the Lord. Going to be preaching, I think he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Going to be preaching this Thursday at my little, our little well, church. Right. I told him last week, I said, now get ready, it's going to be soon. He's done preached there three times, and uh, he's getting ready to preach the fourth time, I think. This, I'm going to tell him I believe that they were. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, folks, I want to talk to you just a moment about faith. And it, I, I've got a message that's three hours long, and I'm going to try to condense it into 30 minutes. You know how that is, don't you, Tim? Praise God. Uh, but I want to talk to you about faith. And... I, I preached a little bit on faith Thursday night at the little church where we hold services. And uh, I asked the people, I said, would you just give me a few minutes of your attention? Uh, this message, I can't get in in 20 minutes. They say that's average attention span of adults in church is about 20 minutes. <laughs> so you got to get what you get in preaching in 20 minutes. But they say that after that, they pretty, don't, pretty much don't remember what you talk about. But uh, anyway, I want to talk to you about faith. And I, I want to share a little bit with you that I hope will help you to have a stronger faith. Praise God. You can bring them on up, Joshua. Thank you. You can keep the keys and just drive. When we leave here, you can drive. By the way, you're preaching Thursday in my church. <laughs> I told the people that. I hadn't told you yet, so I thought I'd tell you. So the reaction would be, and you're not out there at all. <laughs> no, he's a great son. Great son, I love him. So I, I, I told you last week it'd be soon, didn't it? He 
Yeah, so he, he, I think he did, yes, praise God. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to you about faith, and the, the uh, first scripture I want to read to you is in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. When God showed me what he did about this verse many years ago, it really, really changed me. It changed me about faith. It changed me about uh, being able to believe. And it helped my faith when he showed me what he did about this verse. In, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is. Now, a lot of people, I won't, a lot of ministers, a lot of ministers won't believe what I say, and I don't believe a lot of what they say. Yeah. Because when I see them differ from the word, I, I, it's something like happens here, turns off in here. And I've been in services where I'd be listening to a preacher preach, and, and I hear him say something contrary to the word of God, but that immediately turned me, turned my, my little volume down here, and I don't want to hear too much after that. But I say, Lord, if you got me here, let me get what I'm supposed to get. Praise God. But a lot might not agree with this, but as long as I have the scriptures to back me up, I don't really care what people. Because when I said before God, I don't want him to say, well, why didn't you believe it? You knew I said it. Why did you let what people think and what other people said it the way it's a certain way or that, that way or this way? Why did you let that affect you? Why didn't you just accept what my word said? So back in the 70s, he told me, I want you to do something. I'm going to tell you, he told me to do it. They tell me, ask me to do it. He said, I want you just to take all the stuff that you've learned and all the, the teachings of the denominations and the different religions and all that, I want you to throw it in the trash and just chuck it. That's what the word he used to me was chuck it. And I knew what that meant meant go away. So I did. Now he said, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to read my word, meditate in it, study it, and just believe what it says. That's what he said. So that's what I started doing then. And I've been doing it ever since. So that's where I run into problems with people. A lot of people, don't, they say they believe the Word of God, but when I share a verse with them, they say, you know how many times this happened to me in the ministry? I say, here's what the Word says about this. And they say, yeah, I just asked the person, do you believe the Word? I, I believe what the Word said. Yeah, I do too. They said, I'm, I'm like you, I do too. So I say, here's what this verse says about this. They say, yeah, this has happened to me. Yeah, but I really don't mean think it means what it says there. I really don't think God meant that. So I say, so you're saying that God is not smart enough to say what he meant to say and mean what he says. So I made my mind if I said, here's what I believe. If God said it, I believe it. I believe God said what he meant to say, and I believe he meant what he said. So if you differ, you differ with God. You don't differ with me or man. When somebody gives you a hard time telling them what you said, you read from the scriptures, they're not disagreeing with you. Now they'll take it out on you because you're a fleshly person they can get to. But it's God who their problem is with because he's the one who said it. And in this verse he said, now faith is. Faith, God wants us to have a now faith. I know a lot of people with a Yesterday, I mean, not yesterday, some yesterday, yeah, but a faith in the future, thinking about for the future, believing for the future. I may not have a future face today. God said, now faith is. Now faith. It's a, it's, a, it's a now faith, Kevin. It's a now faith. And if you believe for a now faith, you'll get a now faith. You'll get it now. People say you pray for healing, just wait for God to do it. Jesus never said that. Never was demonstrate the word of God, the four gospels. He prayed, when they come for prayer, he prayed for them. And what happened? He said, go wait six months and you'll get it. You did. They got it when? Now. I want it now, Lord. He said, you're going to get it now. And the Bible said many places he laid his hands on every one of them and they were healed. Instantly healed. Faith is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, not, of things not seen. The word substance there is a word that says it means support that holds me up, hope keeps us solid. It's, it's something that is real. It's something that will, uh, will keep us uh, uh, solid in our faith. And the word evidence there is proof. 
it says, fruit that within us that makes us know we have what we cannot see. The word faith there in that verse is a word which has a threefold meaning according to the Greek that I look, I, I often look up words in the Greek dictionary of God to see what they mean. And it said faith is being totally persuaded. Totally persuaded. It is being in the, it is being convinced of God's truth. Convinced. It is having absolute assurance, it says. It contains no doubt. Listen, folks. I don't get the way off here, but I meet so many people that say they have faith, and I can sense after I talk to them a while and, and to hear how they talk and what they talk about forever. They don't have it. Now they have it, but they don't have it the way they think they do. Because we don't play games with people. If you don't have the faith and you pray for somebody to be healed, don't tell them that's not the word about going to the doctor. I tell them if, they, if, if I'm not sure or they're not, I say go to the doctor. Because I believe that doctors are of God. Now some people may not, but I do. I believe that God says in his word, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. Now the doctors do a lot of good. If we didn't have doctors, we would have a lot less people in this world. You know that, don't you? They'd be dead and gone. So I thank God for the knowledge he's given doctors. But doctors are not my, my number one priority of who I go to when I'm in need. My number one priority is Jesus. And he, he's the one I depend on and look to. Now back in the 70s, my wife and I and children were eating supper one night at a home, in our home. And we, we were sitting there. She had prepared the, the supper. And that dates me because it's, we used to call it supper back then, not dinner. We call it dinner now. I used to call it lunch, dinner. I lived on a farm. With my family, my grandmother, grandfather, my sister and I, we had outside, we had outside, we come to dinner! It was noon time. Come to dinner. Anybody remember the dinner time? And then come to supper! That was dinner. Breakfast, dinner, supper. Okay, now it's breakfast and whatever else we eat. Whatever it's called. Lunch and then uh, brunch and uh, then the uh, dinner. Dinner is now supper time. But anyway, we were sitting there eating, getting ready to eat, and we prayed over a meal. We always prayed over a meal. We had three precious kids God gave us, and my wife and myself. And we had this home that God had blessed us with, but it had a regular formal dining room and a big table, but we didn't want to use She didn't want to use that every time we ate. So she said, let's build a breakfast bar. So that's what we done. We built a breakfast bar between the kitchen and the former dining room, and that's where we said, Nate. Okay, so uh, this was before Joshua came around. But uh, we were, were sitting there, bowed our heads, getting ready to pray. And I, and I always, when I pray, I'd always look up with my eyes closed like that. And I was looking up and was getting ready to pray, and all of a sudden there was Jesus looking right at me. And he said, look right at me, Charles. And he said, I'll be your physician. <laughs> now, I didn't know that two weeks later we were going to have a car wreck that was going to total our car on the way home from church. Jesus said, I'll be your physician. At every sentence, Charles, I have tried to depend on that. People say to me, you got these things wrong with your brother Fred. You got that wrong and this wrong. Why don't you go to the doctor? I said, I do. <laughs> I said, I got a physician. Yeah. One that appeared to me and told me he would be my physician. So what do you want me to do? Discard what he said and go to the doctor? Now, I'm not telling you that anybody here say, hear me say, don't go to the doctor. 
What did I just say? Doctors are good. They're of the Lord. Did not say that then. So if somebody accuses me and tell people not to go to doctor, you'll know how they lie, okay? Then you need to get saved. It's all liars. So they'll part like fire. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I tried to depend on the Lord. Now, am I going to say I'll never go to the doctor? No. Because Peter said, I'll never deny the Lord the next day and say, hey, he did live 20 hours. He died three times. So I say, I'll never go to the doctor. I'll be in the doctor's office or the hospital before the day's over. Because God's going to say, you're not going to, Christ's not going to work with me. But with God's help, I hope to hold on to the end. And I may not have much longer, but I hope to hold him on to the end and believe him from, as my physician. Now, Jesus wants to be our doctor. I may get off. I'll get back on my message here. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, evidence of things not seen. Faith is being totally persuaded. How much persuaded? Totally. Faith is being convinced of God's truth. It is having complete assurance. It contains no doubt. Faith is knowing in our hearts that God's word is what? True. Thank you. Who said true? Somebody. Else. You hear? It's knowing in our hearts. You notice I didn't say minds. If the faith was in our minds, every one of us in here today wouldn't have need of nothing because we've all got it up there. We believe God's word is true. We mentally acknowledge that, don't we? But when it comes to the heart, you know the difference? between faith in the mind and faith in the heart. Faith in the mind prays and hopes. Faith in the heart prays and knows. Amen. Knows. Wow. Don't play games. These people that won't take their children to the doctor because they believe that the God's going to take care of them and end up dying. If they believe God's going to take care of them, they will never die. That's just the way it is. Then people need to get their kids to the doctor. Because they're playing games with their faith and with their kids' lives. And it shouldn't happen. And it bothers me. But if you know, you don't need a doctor. If you know. I was going up the highway the other day, a few days ago, and somebody texted me and said, please pray. Said that there's a meeting going on and it's concerning some things in our work and I'm concerned about my job. And, 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 and she's a precious young lady that loves the Lord. She She's a nuclear medicine person, technician in in, uh, in E-Town, and just a wonderful her and her husband, just love the Lord, their kids, this wonderful Christian family. She said, but I'm concerned. And I, I said, okay, I'll be praying. And I felt immediately for, God said, immediately say, tell her it's going to be okay. But I didn't. I, uh, I said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to pray, make sure I'm hearing from God. I don't know if it was God, but so I, I said, I'm going up the road, and, and I said, Lord, you got to show me. Give me a sign. Show me. Now, now that's another thing. Don't bother coming to me and telling me not to ask for signs. I've been doing my whole ministry. God's answer when I need. When I went into ministry full time, I fleeced him 20 times, 20 times, 20 times before I went into ministry because I wanted to know that what I was doing was God's will. And I knew if I knew it, no matter what Satan covered me with, we would stand because I had the assurance that God was in it. So don't come and tell me that I'm going to ask for signs. One of God's greatest servants in the Old Testament asked for signs. Jennifer turned around and asked for the opposite sign next time. So don't tell me not to ask for signs because you're wasting your time. I believe it's all right to do that when it is for one reason. I want to know the will of God, and I am sincere. Going up the road, I said, Lord, you've got to show me a sign. I said, do this right now. Let me know. do this. Let me see this. Why is our city? It wasn't, wasn't like And I didn't, I didn't go no worse, and there it was right in front of me. And I said, okay, Lord, now I want you to confirm what you just did. You know what you're doing? You know? Again, I said, show me this. And when I wrote, there it was, there's another one. And I said, Lord, now you've done it twice, but I want you to do it three times. <laughs> because I wanted to tell this girl, and, and sure enough, right down the road was a third sign. 
in a matter of a minute or two minutes, God had showed me three different signs that I asked for. So I said, Lord, is everything going to be all right with her? And he spoke three scriptures to me. And every time he's ever spoke those scriptures, when I pray, it's always happened. And this has been going on for years. Now, sometimes, Charles, I don't get them when I'm praying for people. But, I, but sometimes I do. He spoke these three scriptures to me, and I knew it was done. And I called her, and I said, don't you, I'm a text her. I said, don't you worry. I was going down the road, but I texted her. I need to get this to her. And I told her, God's just told us what we'll be okay going to be all right. She said it has to be because certain certain things is this way. If I lose my job, and I said, I, I texted her back and said, it's going to be okay. God's going to take her. And as I was doing it, God spoke to me and said, you just used a mustard seed of faith. That was his words. A mustard seed moves mountains. I'm not looking for great faith. I'm just looking for the mustard seed. Because the mustard seed brings about miracles just as any other amount does and so I, he said you just used the mustard seed of faith so we got to church I told her I said you don't even have to pray you don't even have to believe and I said your husband doesn't have to do either he already was believed he already knew he said but I said you don't even have to believe he said that's wrong you should tell me that. why 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 should I you think that every person that ever came to Christ had perfect faith to receive? But they still received when they came to it, didn't they? I believe, help thou my unbelief. Is that what one man said? So I said, listen now, if you don't hear nothing else about faith, listen to this. Everybody, everybody listen. Anybody listening? One. Okay. I'll speak to you. <laughs> it only takes one person believing. It don't take ten. It doesn't take a thousand. It just takes one. If him prays and believes for something, there's no need for anybody else to believe. He's going to exercise all the faith needed to see the miracle come to pass, and it's going to happen. Wow. Man, it sure helps when you got a wife like, like this wife to agree with you. If two agree together on such a thing, I love the fact you got to you get this couple, you can agree together. And one can put the flight a thousand. How many two? Ten thousand two can put the flight. Praise God. So if you don't have a prayer partner, you need to find one. If you just call them, well, it's time. My time's up. I need to get my message in. Faith is knowing in our hearts that God's word is true. Listen to this. Faith is being so sure of it that we act upon it knowing we will receive what it says faith is being so sure that when we pray when we pray we act upon that what we pray because we know it's going to happen if you know that when you pray about healing for yourself and God's going to do it you know God's going to do it you have no need to go to the doctor you need to go when you're not sure. And I've been to the doctors before. This thing in the 70s never happened to me. And uh, But God took care of it. Listen, faith is the belief or knowledge in which no doubt exists. If you're praying and you've got doubt, that's not faith. If you're praying and you're not sure it's happening or you're not positive, that's not faith. You're praying and hoping, but you're not praying and believing. That's for all of us. Now, prayer, faith is the belief or knowledge in which no doubt exists. It's knowing something is true to the place that we have perfect peace. God's peace. Have you ever prayed? Oh, and you, when you got done, you're headed heaven. Did you have peace? You do, don't you? When you pray and you have faith and believe, you have that peace, that settles it. You have no need to ask anymore. Here's what we need to do in Acts.
I'm not keen on not keen players now. You, 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 I've had my name clear. I said, clear on that. If you've got doubt, don't be playing games. But if you know that when you pray, it's not. Here's what we need to be doing afterwards. We need to keep giving him thanks and praise. <laughs> we spend too much time asking, not enough time praying. Yeah. That's why I think it's going like today, service of worship and praise, I could stay in that for hours. I love the presence of God. I never get tired of it. I love being in God's presence. And when we when we pray and we know it's done, you know what I do? I say, thank you, Lord, for doing that. Thank you, God. You now that precious couple is still going through things, but I'm just, I'm thanking God because God's told me it's done. God told me this morning, I was thinking about it. He let me know it's done. It's done. God's going to take care of it. I said, you know what happened? It may turn out to be better than it was before this happened. I believe that, don't you? I know some of you do. Faith is being so sure of something that when we pray and after we pray, we have no fear or worry. Faith is being so sure of something that we have no fear or worry. If you have fear after you get done, you didn't pray in faith. If you have worry after you get done, you didn't pray in faith. Faith is believing that when we pray, we will receive we believe it. We know it. We know we'll re we will receive. Faith is knowing because of our because is knowing because of our faith that we will receive what we are in need of. Faith is the substance of what we hope for, the proof of what we've not seen. Now, faith is what you have need of. When you have faith. You have what you have need of. And this is what he's saying. The substance. Uh, what I need an eyeglass case. What is that? It's an eyeglass case. When I pray and I don't have one and I pray, so Lord, I need an eyeglass case and I'm trusting you to give me one. That's just as if I've got it. I possessed it right the moment I believe. It hasn't been manifested yet, but I, I possess it right that moment. And I know from then on, I've got an eyeglass case coming. That's the substance. The substance is what you pray for, what you need to have need of. It's what it is. It's the proof. This is proof of an eyeglass, isn't it? Case. Okay. It's proof of what we have not seen. Faith says, I have it before I see it. Faith. It's the proof of what we need. It's the answer to our prayers. Faith is the answer to our prayers. It's what makes us whole. When you have faith, you are whole. You just have to believe for its manifestation. Listen, listen, here's what, listen to what. Listen to, I'm gonna read this to you from Matthew. The 19th chapter. I've been going over, so I'm just going to go over another hour. But I'm about done because I've been lost in 20 big times, man. It looks like y'all last a little longer than that, though. <laughs> y'all seem like you've listened. You know what I do? I said this before, and we'll say it again so you might have facility. When I go to a church service and I'm in there listening to a minister preach, I don't know if he's going to preach 20 minutes or an hour or longer. I remember I preached here an hour, hour and a half one time. And they changed the time back to 10 o'clock, so I was not over here. So. No, they didn't do it for me, so I just need it. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Brother Donald, you're listening for you. <laughs> Praise God. Faith is what makes you whole. You have what it takes, what you need to be made whole. Listen to this. Here's the scripture proof on this. Matthew, the 19th chapter, and the ninth chapter, Matthew, the ninth chapter, chapter 9, verse 21, verse 21. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him, Jesus, and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, listen to our confession. If I, be made, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. 
And Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Faith has to be in something or someone. Faith in anything that's a something will never get you for sure what you need. Material things, no matter what kind of faith you put in material things, will not get you get you uh, what you need. Faith in other people that Jesus will not be sure to get you what you need. There's one person you have to have faith in that you're guaranteed an answer if you have faith and believe his word. That's Jesus Christ. She had faith in Christ. And she said, if I can just get to him, if I could just get to him, and I could just touch his garment, I will be made whole. And she had a blood issue that's taken her life. She spent all the money she ever had on doctors. You know the gospel tells us that. She had run out of hope. But she heard about Jesus. It was healing all the pain. And she said, if I could just touch his clothes. So she came in behind him. He was walking. She was just telling me, Oh, oh, I mean, in the virtue of God, he can work his doctor for a bite. And he'll bring us some. And Jesus said in another gospel, somebody touch him. And the disciple says, What do you mean? The Lord must be lower and lower. Yeah, but somebody touch him and say, There you go. And that healing virtue flew out of here, flew that garment right into her and instantly. But with him, she was made whole. And he said, Faith makes us whole. Faith knows. She had this conviction. I know if I can just touch the heel of this garment, that I'll be made whole. Faith is the answer to our prayers. If any of us writing scriptures down, faith is the answer to our prayers. Matthew 21 22 says that. Matthew 21 22. Mark 11, 24, that's what I like about the precious folks over at the little church. They bring tablets and they're always writing down and they stop me and they get irritated with me because I go too fast and they can't write it all down. One girl, what was that again? I've been gone fast a couple times. What was that again? I said, okay, here, here. I love it though. James 5, chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 talks about faith is the answer to our prayer. I had... Uh, Give me three minutes. I'll, I'll go through this very, very fast. So if you're right, and you'll be able to help with it. Okay. The more we read and meditate, where does faith come from?